this lecture, we will talk about data display and visualization. We will discuss the difference between displaying continuous and discrete data. We will show examples of different color tables for different types of raster data. We will also show many examples of three-dimensional visualization and throughout the lecture, we will focus on visualization as tool for data analysis rather than as tool for creating maps. First, let's look at the difference between display of raster and vector data. It is important to remember that all display of digital data uses raster because our screens are raster. However, Raster and vector data behave differently. First, what happens uh, when we display raster data such as imagery or digital elevation models when we zoom very closely? And what kind of issues uh, are, uh, do we have to face when we are displaying large data sets, data sets that have more pixel, more uh, grid cells then we have pixels um, uh, available for our display. And how does that compare with vector data? So let's look at some examples. Here we have a raster digital elevation model displayed along with vector data uh, major roads. So when we zoom in, you can see that for the raster data, we start to see the pixels. On the other hand, the vector data representation is very good and it preserves the shapes very well. Another issue with raster data is uh, when we have very large rasters and we can't display every possible, every cell that we have stored in the raster. Uh, data set. And this is especially issue for raster representation of lines or points because if not all grid cells can be displayed some features will get lost. So let's look at how it will look like. So for example here is a zoom in, zoom in of uh, streams represented as raster. These streams are part of a very large data set with thousands of rows and columns. When we display, when we zoom out to see or to display the full data set, you can see that the stream network essentially falls apart because some of the pixels are not displayed. So essentially this is how this network looks like. So you can see there are missing pieces here. There is a big chunk missing here. So this is because we don't have all the pixels displayed. However, if these data are converted to vector representation, when we zoom out to full, full size of the vector data, the continuity in the streams is still preserved. So, to conclude, we can see that vector and raster data scale differently. And with raster display, when we zoom in, the pixels show up at certain uh, resolution. And when we display ra large rasters, some pixels may get lost and we can lose the structure of the feature. But of course, they are still represented in the data set, we just don't see them. With vector data display, zoom in and zoom out with the data is scalable and it preserves the shape. So during the last lecture, we, did, uh, we have shown uh, some conversions between raster and vector data. And one reason is that sometimes uh, we want to have raster data represented as vector data because, this, uh, because the display scales better. Now let's look at color. Color is a very important tool for displaying raster data. 
we need to keep in mind that each color can be defined as a combination of red, green, and blue, and each of them can have very uh, varying intensity between 0 and 255. So for example, white will have all red, green, and blue 255, black will have all zeros, and here you can see that, for example, yellow will be combination of red and green. And you can see that yellow here is between red and green. So let's see whether you can find out what same uh, color will be. So you can see it is here and it will be combination of green and blue. So, so how do we assign colors for discrete raster data? That's relatively simple. We just need to distinguish quantitative data and qualitative data. For quantitative data, we try to use intensity as function of values. And we use the hue and change the hue uh, sparingly. So for example, here we have a map where we have four different values of soil erodibility. And we will represent these uh, um, this, uh, values using discrete, uh, discrete colors, so each value has its own color, with increasing intensity of red. Then another example is for qualitative data. For qualitative data, we try to keep constant intensity or intensity that is very close to each other and use discrete hue, which is based on attribute. So typical example will be land use, uh, where we have, for example, in this map, we have seven classes and we have seven distinct colors. Each of them is defined as RGB and there are no other colors in this map. So relatively simple concept, simple assignment of colors. Continuous raster data are a little bit more complicated because with discrete data, we had just a limited number of, uh, of classes that needed to be assigned some colors. But with continuous data, we can have million different values in our map. So we need a different approach how to, uh, how to assign color for each of these values. So, so here are some approaches. One of them is discretization. So what we can do, we can change the million values that are in the, in the map. We can classify them into smaller number of discrete categories, 15 or 20. And then we can assign the colors the same way as for the discrete, ma uh, discrete maps. However, of course, we lose some information because we have really reduced the, the number of values which are uh, represented in the map. So another and, and most common way is the continuous color table. And these continuous color tables use interpolated values of RGB, red, green, and blue intensities in the uh, to assign color for each unique value in the raster data sets. And these continuous values can be assigned in different ways. They can be assigned uh, with uniform interval, they can be histogram equalized, or they can be distributed along standard deviation. And there, is, there are additional methods and we will show some examples. So for example, here we have the example between continuous interpolated colors and discrete uh, smaller number of categories. So you can see here we have the, the digital elevation model where we have floating point values from 56 to 155. And we can reclass it to six categories and then each category 
will have its own number and then we get map like this. And you can see that in this map we have really lost some of the information compared to the continuous map. Um, and I'm mentioning this type because this is very often the default behavior in, uh, in some uh, geographic information systems. For example, for some maps, ArcGIS would default the color table to six categories. So it is a good, if this is not enough, if you see that you are losing too much information with six categories, it, it is a good practice to increase the number of categories or to switch to floating point, repre floating point continuous representation.